We got a little live load reduction on today's schedule. It could be very useful in your next building design if you have a multi-story structure. So let's get into it. We have my little figures here, my little figures there. Uh, we have a five-story structure, however you want to look at it. If you're European, if you're American, first floor is the floor that's the first elevated floor, or you can call it the second floor. Just keep things straight, okay? But this is how I've denoted it today. Roast me if you want. And today we are going to determine our live load demand on column A that I have highlighted down at the base or the first floor column in the center of the building. Uh, I have some different colors drawn on the elevation here at each floor. Those designate different types of live loads that we're gonna design for. So let's get those defined. Up at the roof, we have our roof live load designated as LL sub little r at 20 PSF. We have a uh, reading rooms classified with a live load of 60 PSF. And then we have uh, library storage racks with a live load of 150 PSF. So big honking loads for those storage racks. If you couldn't guess from my designations here, we're gonna assume that this is a five-story library, all right? And that's a little shout out to my uh, alma mater, UMass, because we have like a, I don't know if it's still like the tallest library in the US, but it's, it's like 20 something floors and there's a bunch of book storage racks. So these types of places actually exist. And uh, yeah, so a little twist on there. Now, we all know I'm not making up these live loads just because I think, you know, a reading room constitutes 60 PSF design. No, these all are designated by the ASCE 716 at the time of this recording, gonna be 22 here in the not too distant future and so on and so on as the code continues to get uh, updated. But today's example is ASCE 716. Let's head over and let's just take a look at what it is because it's in chapter four, it's in the live load section, specifically in table 4.3-1 that you see in front of me. We scroll down here, let's go to roofs first. Roofs, they have their own subclass here. And we are gonna say today we are an ordinary flat pitched and curved roof. So we're, we're basically an ordinary flat roof. So uniform L sub O, 20 PSF. And it also gives you kilonewton per meter squared conversion if you know, you're doing SI. Uh, and another nice little thing here that they will reference again when we go to our live load reduction calcs, but they give you two more tables. Live load reduction permitted, yes, no. Okay, and then a second one. Multi-story live load reduction permitted, yes, no. If you scroll down here, you see, yes, we are permitted to reduce this type of live load uh, in our calculations. And then they give it, uh, it just does not apply for multi-story for roofs because you can only have one roof in a, in a building. I guess maybe if it was tiered, it could somehow be multiple roofs potentially for a member, but I'm not gonna get into that today. Yeah, uh, let's, building has one roof. So this multi-story doesn't apply to that. Ah, libraries, look at that. Another subsection, reading rooms, 60 PSF for El Sabo. Uh, is it reducible? Yes, it is. Is it reducible for multi-story conditions? Yes, it is. Great. And then if you're wondering on the side here, they also have additional criteria that you need to design your structure for. Uh, so they give you live loads, which is a PSF pounds per square foot type of dealio. And then they also give you criteria for concentrated loads. So if you're designing uh, a beam or more realistically, if you're designing that floor slab that we kind of defined before, you'd have to do both of these. You'd have to put those concentrated point loads in places to make sure it's not governing in any of your uh, design cases. Stay in the same area. Stack rooms, 150 PSF. Is it reducible? No, it is not reducible. Okay, let's keep that in mind. What about for multi-story conditions? Yes, it is reducible. Well, why does that work? Well, we'll get into that. So let's keep going, all right? All right, so let's start with our roof and then we're gonna work our way down, all right? At the grand scheme of things, zooming out here, you have two different methods in order to determine live load reductions. You have the method to determine live load reduction for roof live loads, and then you have the method for floor live loads. Two separate things. You can't interconnect the two to find one to find the other. Both are right next to each other in chapter four of the ASCE 7. They're very clear uh, which one is which, and both of them are significantly different procedures from one another, but they're both straightforward. So since we are at the roof, we need to be focusing on roof live load reduction, obviously. That with the following equation looks like this. L sub R equals L naught times R1 times R2. So we have two variables to find. And we've been given some additional criteria. Your final reduced roof live load has to be between 20 and 12 PSF. So they give you 
your your max and minimums. Your max is just what you started with, 20, and your minimum is a, at a minimum threshold. So you can't just reduce your live load into oblivion and then just like not really design for it. That's not permitted. There becomes a point where they say, all right, enough is enough. Use this lower bound value to move on with your design. Well, first, R1. And that's dependent upon the tributary area to the member that you are designing for. I know I gave centerline to centerline of 19 feet for column to column and they're two foot columns, which means the overall building footprint is 20 by 20. That's the reason I did that to try and keep it a little, a little bit cleaner. Your tributary area, they define that as A sub T would then be equal to 20 feet times 20 feet for a total of 400 square feet. I wanna get back to actually getting into these codes. I know I kind of stepped away from them a bit. Reduction roof live loads, pretty straightforward. We're in this equation right here, 4.8-1, and we are currently solving for R1. We are in US customary, so we're here. They also have a whole separate set for SI units, so just pay attention to which one you're using. Uh, and we just found that our AT is 400, so we fall into this criteria. So we get to use an R1 based on using this equation. So let's plug in 400 for AT and get our final R1 result, which gets us 0 0.8, lovely. Now, what about R2? Well, directly below that, we have our R2 scenario. And this is based on the slope of your roof. And so we need to find this variable F equals the number of inches of rise per foot of run. Uh, in SI, it's a different equation. So again, just pay attention to that. Uh, today, I didn't define that. We said we're a flat roof, but let's give it a 312 pitch. So it's going to rise uh, three inches for every 12 inches of run. That's really standard type of um, classification in the US is using a rise over run method instead of like a degrees or an angle. The F variable would equal three since it's the number of inches of rise. So it's not three over 12 as your variable for F. It is three which falls right here, which means, oh, we're nice and simple today. R2 just equals one. And all of that plugged in gets us 16 PSF for a reduced roof live load. We are greater than 12 PSF, so we haven't crossed that threshold. So we are good to proceed forward using 16 PSF as our reduced live load when determining the total axial demand on column A. Let's keep moving now. We're gonna transition over to live load reduction for floors. Hold up though, wait a minute. Uh, one clear note that they do specify in the AC7 is whether you do or do not have occupied roof space that you're designing for. If people can go up there and enjoy the sunset, you know, uh, can hang out and all that kind of stuff, that is a whole different uh, criteria that you need to follow in order to make sure that you're designing your roof accordingly. This design is assuming 20 PSF, so it's a non-occupiable roof, so only like maintenance access, it's a locked door, you need a special key to get up there kind of deal. Uh, so pay attention to that. Occupiable roofs are a big deal and they're very different in their design. All right, now we're moving on. All right, we're gonna go backwards from roof live load and just scroll up one page and we're gonna find ourselves in section 4.7. Ultimately, you're gonna find yourself in this equation right here. That's the, that's the meat of the thing. We have two variables, K sub LL and a sub t. Well, a sub t we know is that tributary area thing. We're feeling more comfortable about that. It's a slight twist for floors to pay attention to. Um, but ultimately, KLL, you can actually calculate this. Uh, however, they have provided a table for most scenarios that you'll run into as a designer. But we have a center column that we are designing for. So as you can tell, KL is dependent upon the element with which you're designing for and trying to reduce live load to design that element. We have an interior column, which means we have a KLL of four. And then if you're just not too sure about that, if you're new, just like most of the ASCE7, they have kind of definition of the variables within the equation that we're using. So it's great. One of the first lines it says, uh, subject to the limitation of doing live load, KLLAT needs to be uh, 400 square feet or more in order to reduce live load according to these equations. So let's check that first. AT is equal to, we know 400 square feet 
for each floor of the loading type that we're looking at. So that's 400 square feet, and we have two floors of reading room loading, which gets us 800 square feet of tributary area. We know we have a KLL of four. Those combined get you 3,200 square feet, which is significantly more than 400 square feet. So we know that we are permitted to reduce per that equation. So that's great. We have our equation from the ASC 7 and we have everything plugged in. And instead, what I'm gonna have you do is keep this, although I plugged it in as 60, keep it as the variable L sub O for the moment. And what you'll see it spits out is a decimal of LO. So this equals 0 0.515 L sub O. And then we're gonna use that later to help us out. Then you can plug in 60 and that gets you, I'm gonna round up just slightly, 31 PSF as our reduced live load. Well, we do have uh, minimums that we need to check to make sure we're not dropping below. If we were designing for only a single floor of this loading type, we can't reduce more than 0.5 L sub O. However, we have two loads, so it goes on to specify that you cannot decrease by more than 0.4 L sub O. Well, 0.515 is greater than 0.4, so we haven't dropped below our minimums, so we are good to proceed. As you become more familiar with this calculation, you will see that it's all driven, if I go red here, by your AT value. So as this increases, your overall decimal will continue to plummet, which uh, how does that, how can you manipulate that? Well, your column can support a larger tributary area. So your beams could span further between columns, or you could have more stories with that type of loading that a column is supporting. So all of those things play into uh, this, the live load reduction. And so say you had three stories or four stories, or like I said, a bigger tributary area to that column, all of a sudden you could be seeing 0.28 as the decimal that you get for live load reduction. You are not permitted to just keep dropping that. Uh, it becomes unconservative and the probabilities start to get outside of the realm of what engineers are comfortable designing for. And so that's why this limiter is in place. Our last two floors, the second and first floor, this is where we have our storage book racks uh, with a live load of 150 PSF. Now, uh, you're like, why are we even checking these? I thought it was non-reducible. Well, let's head back to the ACE 7. If we scroll a little bit further down here, you'll see that we have additional criteria for a bunch of unique situations. Uh, and these kind of sections here are the resultant answers that they plugged into that table uh, that we determined our live loads in prior, okay? And you'll see 473, heavy live loads, 150 PSF is a lot. Anything, as you see here, anything in my mind over 80 PSF gets to be really heavy. Those are some big loads that you're starting to work with and they can stack up quickly. Uh, but heavy live loads, loads that exceed 100 PSF shall not be reduced. We have 150 PSF, hence the, for a single story live load reduction is not permitted. That is the reasoning behind it. It did say for multi-story conditions, two or more floors of that loading type, you are permitted to reduce. Well, why did the table say that? That's because of this exception right here. Live loads for members supporting two or more floors are permitted to be reduced by a maximum of 20%, but the reduced live load shall not be less than L as calculated in section 472. 472 is the equation that we used previously to design or, or to determine our reduced live load. So let's plug in as if we were permitted to do this and then compare it to a 20% reduction and take the worst case from there. And again, we are permitted to do this because we have two floors of storage rack loading. If it was a single floor of storage rack loading, we couldn't do it, okay? And it doesn't matter about the element that you're designing. So just because we are this bottom column, it's not that, oh, well, because I'm designing that column, I have, you know, one, two, three, four floors that I'm designing floor, uh, so I can, I can reduce. It's the floors that you need to count that have the live load, uh, the heavy live load that's in question. So we only have uh, in green. So we have one, two floors, okay? So if that, if this one was actually red, 
and we had a single floor that was storage rack, that couldn't be reduced because it's just one floor, even though the column that we're designing is supporting four floors of load. That's where uh, I used to get tripped up. Uh, so, and maybe I am still tripped up. So let me know in the comments down below. I think that's a great talking point. Throw your expertise in there or your experiences, what you've talked with other engineers in your office and stuff like that. Well, we can do the easy one, 80% that's a maximum 20% reduction, gets you 120 PSF. So that's our first option, or as if we were to design it uh, per the equation that we had. The KLLAT is the same value because it's also two floors. Uh, so it's 800 square feet. It's the middle uh, interior column. So that's the KL of four. So everything is literally the same. That comes out to 0 0.515. We didn't even need to recalculate it technically. You can very quickly see you need to take the worser of 0 0.8L or 0.55L. This is your worser case because it gives you a higher uh, design load that you need to design for. We can confirm that we can reduce this heavy live load by a little bit, but only by that 20% permitted reduction. So we get to design both floors using 120 PSF for that column. Now the last bit, we need to actually get our design reaction on that bottom column due to the contributions of the live loads and the roof live load that we just calculated. Well, P, I'll call it A, so P for axial, A for the column A that we're designing for, and then I'm gonna do dash R for the roof, it's equal to 16 PSF times the tributary area of the roof, 400, gets you 6.4 kips from the roof, 31 PSF, 400 square feet for each floor, two floors total, 800 square feet, if you really wanted to get picky, you could technically uh, subtract out the square footage of the column for those floors because that two foot by two foot column is four square feet. So it takes up, you know, a little bit of space that so a, a person can't stand where the column is. But uh, we're going to keep it more simplistic today. We're going to be slightly conservative and that's okay. Equals 24.8 kips equals 120 PSF. Again, two floors, 400 square feet each, 800 square feet. That dumps out 96 kips. You can see the massive difference <laughs> that uh, the live load classification plays. When you get live loads that start to get big, uh, it's gonna dominate your design. All of this summed together, summation P sub A for that column is 127.2 kips. And now this doesn't take into account your load combinations because you would need to get all of your dead loads associated uh, if you're just doing a gravity check on that column and then plugging those plus the live loads. Uh, plus if you had, a, if you're in a snowy area, you got snow on your roof, you gotta consider that as well. Does that, does the snow govern over the roof live load and all that stuff? That's not in today's example, okay? So don't just think that we're done and you can start designing your column for just that reaction. There's a lot more that you know goes into it, uh, but this is rich. Mm. With Team Kestepa, glad to be back doing some more problems. Let me know as well in the comments down below if you enjoy me integrating visually the codes back into this. I think it really helps, and I know I got away from it because I was just being lazy uh, and didn't have the time. But hey, thanks, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.